All right, we'll go ahead and call to order the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners meeting here on Friday the 13th. Uh, Trike Meadows Community College with video conference locations at UNR Cooperative Extension in Las Vegas, Great Basin College in Elko. Before we get started, Commissioner Valentine, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Suzanne, could you please uh, take roll call of the commissioners? Chairman Drew. Here. Vice Chairman Wallace. Here. Commissioner Bliss. Here. Commissioner Hubs. Here. Commissioner Johnston. Here. Commissioner McNinch. Here. Commissioner Morai. Here. Commissioner Valentine. Here. And Commissioner Young. I got a note from Commissioner Young. He is on his way, so please mark your present when he arrives. County Advisory Board members that are with us in Reno, could you please stand up, give us your name and the county that you're representing? And then start over here on the left. Vern Winder, Uncle Cap. Kathy Smith, Washington Cap. Stan Zuber, Parson City. Wait. Sean Shea, Washington County. Tom Casanelli, Uncle County. Corey Lavalink. Phil Green, Persian. Paul Dixon, Park. Glenn Bunch, Mineral. Thank you all, and um, I'm going to go ahead and close item number one and uh, turn it over to Director Wosley for some employee appreciation. Director Wosley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's just a, a few things I'd like to point out, um, bring to the commission and public's attention under this agenda item. Um, the first thing is that uh, April 20th was declared the Nevada proclaimed rather the Nevada Department of Wildlife Day by the city of Las Vegas. Um, that was primarily due to the efforts of IBCMP um, and volunteer coordinators and the fisheries division in, in providing opportunity, angling opportunity in the city of Las Vegas. So um, I did want to um, acknowledge that and make the commission aware that the city of Las Vegas proclaimed April 20th of Nevada Department of Wildlife Day and express gratitude to the staff for that. Um, also, I'd like to point out that the first week of May is uh, Public Service Employees Recognition Week, and as has been for the last several years, we, we took up a collection of personal private donations from, from leadership and shared uh, that with, with our regions to host regional events around the state. In conjunction with that, we uh, like to honor um, employees with uh, increments of five years of, of service. Um, there are a few of those employees that are here today that I, I would like to acknowledge. Um, there were 12 different employees that received a uh, certificate for five years of service. Uh, there were seven employees that received certificates for 10 years of service with the department. These service, these 10 year awards are specific to service with the Department of Wildlife. Um, <clears throat> Amongst those receiving certificates for 10 years of service with the state uh, was Aaron Meyer, who's, uh, who's here today. Aaron, he, um, Aaron is uh, responsible for many of the changes that uh, you've witnessed in the publications. Um, Aaron brings a, a wealth of experience in, in the publication arena. Uh, and has basically redesigned uh, the look, the feel, and the contents of that. Um, and he's been an in integral part of that, that change. We had four employees receiving 15-year uh, uh, certificates. Uh, amongst those was uh, Katie Semper, who's, who's here today helping with, with setup. Uh, she's a supervisor in, in the Western region, and I want to acknowledge her for 15 years. You'll notice as, as we go through this, uh, we had 12 receiving five-year certificates, seven with 10, four. We, we slow, we kind of have a, a pyramid, and, and we look at the age distribution in, in the department, we've got over 50% of our employees that have less than 10 years with the department. So uh, the numbers get smaller and smaller as we, we work towards that, that pinnacle. 
We have two employees acknowledged for 20 years service with the state. Uh, Sean Espinoza and Chris Crookshank. Uh, many of you know Sean and identify Sean through uh, his efforts in the Sage Grouse Arena. And Chris Crookshank uh, has been a, a career fisheries biologist and is uh, presently the state staff specialist for uh, endemic fishes in, in headquarters. Uh, there were three employees acknowledged for 25 years of service. Um, Pat Cummings, uh, most of you know Pat, uh, responsible for uh, bighorn sheep management in, in the southern region. Uh, Chris Drake, who uh, has fisheries responsibilities in the eastern region. And then uh, Suzanne Sporby has also uh, was acknowledged for 25 years. And so Suzanne is an integral part of the director's office. I've, I believe I'm the sixth director that she served in, in some capacity. Um, and I think only one's been fired, so she must be doing pretty good job. <laughs> uh, and then kind of at that, that pyramid, at the top of that pyramid, uh, we have one person that was acknowledged for, for 30 years. Um, and that's Chris Healy. Um, Chris has been the, the voice of the agency in, in many regards, has uh, fostered and established a, a number of a valuable relationships with, with media, with employees. Um, it, it's interesting for, for me to sit in this role and uh, when I meet people around town that I don't know and, and they learn where I work, uh, they say, oh, you know Chris Healy? Do you work for Chris Healy? Uh, <laughs> so I just uh, want to acknowledge that 30 years when we, uh, when we had a little ceremony uh, at the Western Region uh, to acknowledge our employees and, and we acknowledge Chris. Uh, I asked for a show of hands how many people uh, were under 30 years of age just, just, to show, uh, just to show them that there had been somebody working at the Park of Wildlife since before they were born, but also to kind of show Chris that he's not as young as he thinks he is. But, uh, so that, was, uh, that capped off our uh, employee recognition, and I just want to acknowledge those who are here today for their efforts. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who's uh, manning the, the microphone and the phone up up in Elko, um, but if it's Helen, Gilliam Helen was also acknowledged for, for 10 years, so I do want to give her a shout out if that happens to be her up there doing that. Lastly, under the uh, agenda item of uh, employee appreciation, uh, we did just recently announce the Ted C. France Employee of the Year recipient. Uh, interestingly enough, that went to an employee uh, with only five years of service, which is pretty <coughs> characteristic of the Employee of the Year Award. However, what, what made that decision uh, a fairly simple one is that individual received three nominations that were not coordinated, and those nominations were from two different regions, uh, two different divisions, and three different levels uh, within the agency from a uh, staff level to the supervisor level um, to administrator level and that that uh, award went to uh, Dale Coleman. Dale is a helicopter pilot out of Elko who was instrumental in uh, some safety uh, inspections and going above and beyond uh, to make sure that we were able to complete the necessary survey uh, work that, that we need to do to, to develop the recommendations that, that we're making uh, to you today. So in June, since uh, Dale is located in Elko at the June Commission meeting, which is scheduled to be in Elko, uh, we'll uh, have Dale attend and honor him uh, with a plaque at, at that event. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Great. I appreciate it. And just a, a quick word of Thanks to all the employees, especially those recognized today. Obviously, we couldn't do our job uh, without them and all their diligent efforts, and I don't think most folks probably realize just how much work goes into preparing for a commission meeting, not to mention on top of the day-to-day -day operations of the department. So I just wanted to thank staff um, and congratulate those who are recognized. Okay. With that, we'll open agenda item number two. Uh, this is approval of the agenda for possible action. The commission will review the agenda and may take action to approve the agenda. The commission may remove items from the agenda, continue items for consideration, or take items out of order. This is an action item. Are there any questions or discussions on the agenda for today? 
Seeing none, is there any CAB or public comment in Reno? Okay, how about Elko? No comment in Elko. Okay, Las Vegas? <laughs> no comment in Vegas. All right. With that, I'll bring it back to the commission. If there's no further discussion, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the agenda as presented. <laughs> okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Wallace, a second by Commissioner McNinch to approve the agenda as presented for today. <clears throat> Any questions or discussion on motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We'll close item number two and move to item number three. This is member items, announcements, and correspondence. This is an informational item. <coughs> Commissioners may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the commission. Any item requiring commission action may be scheduled on a future commission agenda. The commission will review and may discuss correspondence sent or received by the commission since the last regular <coughs> meeting and may provide copies for the exhibit file. The correspondence sent or received by Secretary Wozni may also be discussed. Commission <coughs> member items. Okay, seeing none, Director Wadley. No, Mr. Chairman, uh, any of the correspondence that we received has been forwarded to the Commission. I appreciate that. <laughs> I had just a couple of items. Uh, one being, I've got a lot of email correspondence regarding the policy on the wildlife contest. Um, there was some question as to whether or not that was a priority. It is a priority. Uh, if we go through our policy <laughs> committee, they've been working on our rules uh, of practice and procedure, which is policies. One, four, and five, I believe. Um, once those are cleared, and I think we're getting close, then we'll we'll deal with that. So, um, wanted to acknowledge that, Commissioner Bliss. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman Drew. I just wanted to say uh, that I did uh, attend uh, the day that the um, department released the fish in the Cummins Lake, and uh, appreciate all the the effort and the work that went into getting fish back into. The Cummins Lake, uh, I believe they released somewhere around 10,000 fish in there, and um, some really, uh, you know, like pound and a half peck uh, fish, uh, 18 inches long. And uh, it was nice to stand there on the shore and watch some fish jump in that lake again. It's been a lot of years since they've been there, and, and um, it was it was a uh, neat to see. So I want to thank the department and everybody for getting that done. Mr. Hubs? Um, you mentioned it, uh, Jeremy, a little bit. I did receive some correspondence from groups, local groups, who were interested in taking or, or being part of the ground effort for that new policy for the kill contest or or our policy for our guests or about the, those types of killing contests. And I did pass all their contact information on to Susan, who's making sure that they are updated on um, all agendas and for the um, committees that need to develop policies so they know how to take part and, and be a part of that from inception. Additional commission items and correspondence. Okay, I have one more from the Board of Mineral County Commissioners. Um, it's short, so I'll just read it really quickly. This letter is in response to the Mineral County Advisory Board to manage wildlife in Mineral County. It was brought to the Board of County Commissioners on April 20, 2016 by Mr. Glenn Bunch, Chairman of the Advisory Board to manage wildlife, requesting that we submit a letter of support to the Nevada Department of Wildlife to introduce elk into Mineral County. It is with great pleasure that we are requesting to have elk introduced into Mineral County. We are in full support of this endeavor. Any questions you may have, please contact us at your earliest convenience. Um, I received that uh, dated 4-15-2016, and I will coordinate that with the department. Um, everything else that I have <coughs> received in regards to correspondence should fall under one of our uh, future agenda items. With the lone exception of uh, some information and correspondence I received on the caliber regulation, that will not be on today's agenda. Okay. Last call for correspondence or commission items. Seeing none, we'll close item number three. We'll move to item number four, county advisory boards to manage wildlife member items. Again, informational. 
Cabinet members may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the Commission. Any item requiring Commission action will be scheduled on a future Commission agenda. County Advisory Boards in Reno, any items for us today? Seeing none, I'll ask, are there any County Advisory Board members in Elko? No, there are not. Okay, how about Las Vegas? Uh, yes, Chairman, we, we have Howard, Howard Watts. Oh, sorry. Howard Watts. I don't have that. Chairman, did you hear us? I do. Okay. So no county advisory board members in either Elko or Las Vegas? No, Vegas says Howard Watts. Oh, Howard Watts. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Howard. Uh, I don't have any comments to add at this time. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll close agenda item number four and open agenda item five. This is approval of minutes for possible action. Mission minutes from the January 29th and 30th and March 24th and 25th, 2016 meetings Get the may be approved at this time. This is an action item. Um, before we open it up, and what we'll do is address each set of minutes independently. Uh, the reason we had the January 29th and 30th minutes on today's agenda is that we did have an outstanding open meeting law complaint and what we had decided to do at our previous meeting was to table those minutes for the time being. Um, Mr. Ward, I would ask you to come up and complete the report on what we've learned about the open meeting law complaint. May it please, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Harry Ward for the record, Deputy Attorney General. Um, you are correct, we did table the minutes for the January 29th and 30th uh, the minutes for that meeting. If you don't mind, I'd like to go ahead and read what's in my litigation report that's going to be item number six. I think it's a lot easier for me to do that and then to go ahead and explain. Um, this matter is, I'm sorry, Bobby McCollum, M C C O L L U M. This matter is an open meeting law complaint filed by Ms. Bobby McCollum against the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners. Ms. McCollum asserts that she attended the January 29th, 2016 meeting at the satellite location in Reno, Nevada. The plaintiff averts that she was unable to hear the discussions of agenda items one through six because of audio difficulties at the Reno location. The complaint asserts that the attempt to fix the audio volume led to distorted audio which faded in and out and at times was impossible to understand. The plaintiff asserts that no accommodations were offered to the Reno audience members, such as repeating the discussions of agenda items one through six. Ms. McCollum forwarded her complaint to the Nevada Attorney General's Office. The Nevada Attorney General's Office notified the board of Ms. McCollum's open meeting law complaint and requested a formal response to the complaint on or before February 22, 2016. The complaint is alleging a violation of NRS 241.010. Uh, subsection 2, formal response to the open meeting law complaint was timely filed on behalf of the commissioner. Additionally, a companion open meeting law complaint was filed by Mr. Lentz, which also was submitted to the Nevada Attorney General's Office concerning similar allegations. The complaint prefers that he was unable to hear the discussions of agenda items 1 through 6 because of audio difficulties at the Reno location. The attempt to fix the audio volume led to distorted sounds and that no accommodations were offered to the Reno audience members, such as repeating the discussions of agenda items one through six. The Attorney General's Office has consolidated both these matters and made a decision. On April 12, 2016, the Attorney General's Office issued an opinion regarding the above two open meeting law complaints. The Attorney General's Office did not find an open meeting law violation pursuant to 241.010. And just to give you a little information, I attended a CLE, which is continuing legal education, and this topic came up. Uh, the attorney general that made the decision was uh, not George Taylor, who we normally hear from, but his boss or the division chief of that section. And he taught at the CLE, and he basically brought this up and said he was there when the legislature passed this, and the intent of the legislature was that for a complaint or a violation of the open meeting law, one of the commissioners would have had to been at the satellite facility. So in other words, as long as all of the commissioners are in one place at the host location and the satellite facility can't hear, 
or there's technical difficulties, it's not an open meeting law violation. <laughs> now, if you remember in January, we did have problems, and we did look into it, we being both the staffer and Dow and myself, they had directional mics there. In other words, they had the old mics. In other words, if I was speaking, you would not be able to hear me. You'd have to speak right into the mic. And when they did that, you would have distortion. So that caused a lot of problems. In addition to the problems when they couldn't hear, I think they tried to amplify it. But in a nutshell, there was no open meeting law violation. Why? Because all of the commissioners were at the host location. What we do in the future, um, I think we take that on an item by item basis as far as what we do. Now, one of the reasons why I'm saying this right now is because the complainant also issued a letter asking this board to add into the minutes of January 28th and 29th that one of the Endow employees texted someone in Reno saying, we can't hear. Um, and this basically is also snowballed. So um, when I say snowballed into more legal work, because that was a public records request now to get the texting from one person to another on a private uh, phone. But anyway, I, I regress. So why are we here on the approval of the minutes? Because she submitted a letter, which I read at the last meeting, which I would request be included somehow in the meeting. Uh, her letter asking that the minutes include that someone texted someone from the Reno office to the host location that there were uh, problems uh, with the sound. I don't know if that happened. It could have happened. Um, since this matter has been dismissed or there's been no violation, it's up to the board whether they want to include that in the minutes of the January 28th and 29th. <coughs> Any questions for Mr. Ward? <coughs> I got one comment, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Young. I, I can't understand why we can't get this fixed. I mean, $99, I can hear my dogs perfectly in my laundry room in Las Vegas from Costco. I can send them barks. I can send them sirens. I can hear anything. It takes two seconds to turn it on. It never fails. I think we should be able to get this fixed for the folks down in Las Vegas because majority of the population, I'll say it again, of this state lives in Las Vegas or in Clark County. And the, and the folks that have an interest in, you know, this commission should be able to get good service on this. We've been fighting it. I've been on the commission now four years. We haven't had it right yet. We're, and we're wasting time on uh, violations of the open meeting law. So the technology is not that tough. Uh, even a dummy like I, me, can do something like that. And I'm the most technologically illiterate human being on the face of the planet, except for perhaps uh, my wife is even worse than I am. But uh, it's not that hard, Mr. Chairman. Not uh, getting too far afield under our commission item, I would say that the challenge isn't so much with the systems, it's getting systems that talk to one another and making sure we have a facility large enough to host this event because obviously we have a lot of interest in in person. So the department, and I appreciate their efforts, continues to make this easier and less painful. So with that, um, let's take the minutes from the January 20th and 30th uh, meeting, and I would ask if there's any comments, concerns, Questions or revisions to those minutes? Okay, seeing none, um, I guess my my thought would be to move forward with approval of the minutes. Um, Suzanne, I believe you uh, had reviewed Ms. McCollum's letter and made the appropriate updates um, where there was discussions in the room. Um, as far as the text portion goes, I don't think we can verify any of that, so my suggestion would be simply to place Ms. McCollum's letter in the exhibit file for the meeting. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments by the commission? This is an action item, so I'll take it out to public comment or CAD input in Reno for the January 29th and 30th minutes. Seeing none, any public comment in Elko? No comment in Elko. And Las Vegas? Okay. Yes, there's public comment in Las Vegas for the record, Fred Volz. Uh, the way of verifying the phone records and or text messages would be to get a copy of the phone records from the phone company or whoever the provider is. And I would encourage the commission to do that because uh, given the frequency of communication between people in Reno and Las Vegas at that February, uh, January 29th meeting, uh, there definitely was a problem and it occurred early on in the meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Additional comments in Las Vegas? 
Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner um, Hubs? I'm just unclear as to why we would need to research the text message if there was no violation deemed, I mean, based on the fact that we were all together in the same location. Is that, I, I'm missing the point as to why that would need to be done. I, I guess I am of the same opinion that you are on this one. I, I don't believe they need to be included. <laughs> Wasn't part of the formal meeting. Additional questions or comments? If there aren't any, I would uh, entertain a motion for the commission meeting minutes from January 29th and 30th. Um, I would like to motion that we accept uh, the meeting minutes for the uh, January 29th and, or, er, yeah, January 29th and January 30th meetings um, for approval. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Sorry. I have a motion by Commissioner Hubbs and a second by Commissioner Morai to approve the minutes from the January 29th and 30th meeting as presented to us by the department. Is there any discussion or question on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> motion carries unanimously, 9-0. Uh, so what we'll do is go to the March 24th and 25th meeting minutes. And I did have one <coughs> minor revision. And that was on page four um, at the bottom of the page where we have um, actually the motion to table the meeting minutes from January 29th and 30th. We had Commissioner Hubs listed as being for and opposed to that motion. And I believe it should just be opposed. So we would strike her name um, from commissioners in favor. Any other comments, <coughs> proposed revisions, or questions on the minutes for March? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Valentine. I'll be abstaining for the vote because um, I wasn't in agenda. Okay. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I guess since I was not there the second day of the meeting, but the first day of the meeting, and the motion to file you to approve the minutes for both days, I'll abstain as well. But I have no comments from the day in which I was in the meetings. Anything else? And Commissioner McMahon? Mr. Chairman, I was, uh, I was, I missed the first hour or so of the meeting, but I feel comfortable um, since most of the stuff beforehand was uh, administrative type stuff, I, I feel okay voting on it today. Okay. This is an action item, so I'll open it up. Are there any county advisory board or public comments in Reno on the minutes from March 24th and 25th? Seeing none, how about Elko? No comments in Elko. And Las Vegas? No comments in Las Vegas. I'll bring it back. The board, are there any other questions or comments? Commissioner Young? Well, uh Let's start with the uh, present for the two-day meeting, that portion. I know Paul said he wasn't there yet. Our notes, or I'm going to say that they were, he was there. I think somebody else said they were also not present. And, uh, you, Brad? I was present on Thursday, but I was absent on Friday. So we need to correct the minutes, sir. And I'd be on the first page. Okay, so Suzanne, the change would be on page one. Uh, commissioners present for the two-day meeting, we would strike Commissioner Valentine. Okay. And we'd make a footnote that Commissioner Johnson was absent on Friday. Okay, okay. any other questions or corrections? If not, I would entertain a motion with those two changes that have been discussed. Move to approve the March 24th and 25th meeting minutes as presented with the, the two changes that have been uh, discussed today. Second. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Bliss and a second by Commissioner Wallace to approve the minutes of the March um, 24th and 25th meeting with changes on page one uh, to who is present to strike Commissioner Valentine and to note that Commissioner Johnston was absent on Friday and we had a second revision on page uh, four whereby we struck Commissioner Hubbs 
um, from those commissioners in favor of the motion on tabling the minutes. Any questions or discussions on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 7-0 with Commissioner Valentine and Johnston abstained. Okay, with that, we will close item number five.